Me. Go ahead, Uncle. Am I, am I audible to you? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Beloved, I greet you all in the name of our Lord and our beloved Savior Jesus Christ. I am so glad to get connected to you. And when we recollect and when we see the reality, how the Lord is faithful to us in all our situations, and especially during these days of pandemic. And we have been enjoying extra grace of God in all our situations. And it is good to praise him and to honor him and to thank him and to worship him all the time. Our God is great and he is good, he is faithful and his mercy endureth forever. And we praise God for this opportunity. And I would like to read a small portion from the word of God. That is Psalm 100. Psalm 100. There are five verses. And uh, I want to read it for you. Psalm 100 and verse 5. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. May our living God speak to us through this portion and prepare us for the time of worship we are going to have as his children on this Lord's day. And we see the wonderful words we come across here. Gladness, joyfulness, singing, praises unto him. And this is a, a psalm of gladness and a psalm of thanksgiving and a psalm of praise. And it is good to be glad all the time, to rejoice. It's a blessing in our lives to rejoice all the time and to be happy and to have gladness. And here, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Some of the portions in the scripture, they sound very strange. He is encouraging, he is exhorting everybody, everybody for that matter. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. All ye lands means all the countries and all the mankind he is calling upon. Because the reality is entire creation belongs to him. And he is the creator of the whole universe. And not only mankind, even the animal kingdom, plant kingdom, everything has been created by him. He is the Lord of this creation. And he calls upon everybody throughout the world to make a, a joyful noise unto the Lord. We read from Psalm 24 and verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. So this entire creation, every individual, whether he is a child of God, even for that matter, or even a heathen person, even a heathen person, he did not come on his own into this world. Every individual, every life, Lord is the source of all life. And he gives life to every individual. He expects everybody to know this reality and to realize that he is our creator, he is our God, he has made us. So he says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye. The 
examining, identifying, trying to find out a new thing from the same body which has been existing. Though the origin is that we are made from out of the dust of the ground, you think of your body and the members of your body. We only see the external members of our body like hands and our feet and our eyes and our nose and our ears and so many external things. But beyond this, there are so many internal vital parts that have been functioning day and night for our survival, for our survival. They cannot afford to relax for a moment. You think of your heart or your lungs or your kidneys, even your digestive system or renal system, every system in the body, it should keep on functioning. It should keep on working from the day one of your creation. Day one of your life upon this earth, all the members internal, so many systems, they start functioning relentlessly, relentlessly in order to keep us alive. All those systems will keep on functioning. And who has made all these things? It is in the, in the divine wisdom. God has put all these things. And he makes all these things to function. So it, it, is, it is again beyond our understanding. So he is a creator. Not that like a lump he has created us. So many systems, very minute things, very important functioning of our body. So therefore, he, he says, it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Not we ourselves. We, do not, we don't have anything in this creation. Anything, no suggestion, and no guidance, nothing, nothing. It is, it is absolutely in his divine wisdom. And God has created us. God has given us all, all these members. Even to glorify with all these members. He has given us a body to be, uh, he, he wants to do us. As we read from 1 Corinthians and 6.19, know not that your body is the temple of the spirit of God that is in you. This is the temple of the spirit of God. And, uh, and God wants to be glorified through our body. When you have a mouth, we have to glorify with our mouth. When we have our ears, or our eyes, or our hands, or our feet, every member of our body, we utilize it you ultimately to glorify God. First, to be thankful to him for creating this body. And we, are not, we, we have not created ourselves, the word of God says. So none of the part of the body is our choice. We don't have any choice. But he only has created. And also, I am reading further, Psalm 100 and verse 3. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people. We are his people. We should not forget this. Because he made us. He has got every right over us. We are his people. He has accepted us. Even when we turned away from him, when we have gone astray, when we disobeyed him, yet he loves us. His love is eternal. It is everlasting. And he, he follows us. He makes himself known unto us. He makes his appearance unto us. He reveals his truth unto us. And he brought us into this great light, divine light to know the truth and the reality. What a great thing it is. There are so many millions and trillions of people who do not know their creator. They don't know. They're in darkness, they're in blindness, they're in ignorance, but yet he has shown his grace unto us and he made himself known unto us to know the reality that we are his people. And he's our maker, he's our father in heaven. And uh, uh, to know that we are his people, his people, we are his position, his position. The word of God says, uh, kindly see book of Isaiah chapter 43, wonderful verses we see uh, when God uh, tells Jacob, Psalm, I mean, Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43 and verse one. But now thus saith the Lord, that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine, thou art mine. 
before using this word that you are mine and god says thus say the lord that created the number one lord is our creator creator is our maker and he that formed the as we have been seeing that how he has formed us from the dust of the ground and all our parts of the body internal members of the body we are wonderfully and fearfully made by god this is the, the one. and he has formed the voice rail fear not fire i have redeemed the redeemed the redemption means paying a price to get back uh, there is a story which goes like this once there was a a boy uh, who was uh, uh, they were residing by a river side and his father was a fisherman and uh, and also he he did a some carpentry he made a small boat for him and he was playing he was playing in the river with the, with his toy boat and he was enjoying lot of amusement and one day while he was playing he lost it he went into the water currents and uh, he went uh, further and further and further that the boy could not reach to get it so Some, somehow he lost it after some time he found the same boat in the market in a shop and suddenly he wanted to when he saw that and uh, he, he wanted to grab it telling hey this is my my boat it's something like a small ship it is beautifully a uh, car made by his dad and given to him and he was about to take the shop owner said hey that is mine you cannot take if you want to take pay the price paying the price it is mine but the shopman says of course but now it is mine it is in my shop it is in my position if you want it you pay the price and get it so ultimately he went to his dad and asked him to pay the price and his dad gave him some money that is required he paid it and got it back and now he says now you are so precious to me i have got double right not only that i am your maker and also i i have bought it redeemed i paid the price the same thing god has done in our case he is our maker but when we are lost when we have gone astray away from god dead in us in our sins and trespasses lord jesus christ came down into this world in order to redeem us from our sins he shed his precious blood on the cross and this is a, in the eternal plan of god to redeem us and he paid the price and he bought it and he says now you are mine you are mine you are my position so that is a, what we read in uh, psalm 100 shall we come back to psalm 100 and verse 3 we are his people and the sheep of his pasture sheep of his pasture not only that god has accepted us to be his children to be his people he says you are my sheep you are my sheep and if god is our shepherd what more we want shepherd takes every care of the sheep sheep is an innocent animal it is not like a dog or a cat which are intelligent comparatively sheep is innocent and it cannot defend by himself and uh, his life is always at risk when he, when it goes astray there is every possibility of its uh, falling into the predators and uh, they may kill it and uh, they may eat it away they do something and the shepherd takes care as we read from psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want shall we shall we see that psalm 23 verses 1 and 2 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters that is the kind of care he takes towards every one of us just like a shepherd takes care of the sheep and the psalmist psalmist writer he says lord is my shepherd i shall not want i shall not want that means i am more than secure and i am more than sufficient and he he takes care of my provision even for what to eat and what to drink and how to survive and how to be safe even from the hands of the enemy from the predating animals and the lord is my shepherd i shall not want i am safe i am protected he leadeth me 
beside the still waters and uh, he maketh me to, to lie down in green pastures what a great provision is what a great protection it is and lord really takes care of us when he makes us his children and uh, he 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 takes care of us in everything whatever we want even for our survival our food or our water or our accommodation our safety and protection you all these things and god takes care of us and he wants to be our shepherd therefore he says in the fourth verse enter into his gates some hundred and verse four enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name what can we do for all these things that we have been experiencing day in and day out in our life every moment of our life we have been enjoying all these things don't we deserve we don't deserve we don't deserve in reality but it is his love it is his grace because of which he made a provision unto us with regard to all these things he takes care of us he sent his son jesus christ into this world to lay down his life for us that is what we read in john's gospel 10th chapter and 11th verse i am the good shepherd good shepherd lays down his life for the sake of his sheep and our lord jesus christ is our good shepherd he died us he loved us to the extent of laying down his life for our sake on the cross thereby he has redeemed us and he has delivered us and he has forgiven us and he gave us great salvation and in the salvation we rejoice every day every moment of our life this is a blessed life while we live upon this earth free from every kind of fear and anxiety and worry and he takes he gives protection so therefore he says enter into his gates with thanksgiving and it is courts with praise be thankful unto him so in return what we can do keep on thanking god thanking god praising god for everything every day every time every moment in our lives in the fifth verse we read psalm 100 and verse 5 for the lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generation lord is good he is good to all the people all the time this is a reality this is a reality people those who experience it know by experience and uh, their hearts are full of gratitude to offer thanks unto him he is good his mercy is everlasting consistency with which he shows his mercy all the time his mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations generation after generation after generation if you go into the history of the human race how many generations how many generations came to this world to every generation god was making himself known unto him and people those who know him people those who accept him uh, they know by experience how good is this god how great is this god how loving is this god how he shown his life which is sacrificial in order to give us salvation jesus christ laid down his life for all these things what can we render what can we render we enter into the courts into his presence with all his children it's a great uh, privilege to worship the lord in the congregation of course in the present days we are getting connected over this zoom this facility because of this pandemic so let us remember all these things and let us praise him worship him and to glorify him so that the uh, lord might be honored so may our lord help us to get into this time of worship with these thoughts thank you